Who's the defendant, John H. Doe, in all caps? It is never the flesh and blood man, because they can't charge a natural man, unless, under common law, you've injured somebody, physical injury, or breached a contract with them. If they can show the contract or they can show the physical injury, then they have a right to claim something. You claimed everything John Doe, all, all capital straw man, all capital letter straw man owns, and then some. How about claiming he owes you $100 billion in silver coin? Will he contest it? The UCC-1 is evidence of a lien or a contractual relationship. So as Gene Keating says, there has to be a contract first to, fi to file a UCC-1. So you have to establish a rather large lien or debt owed to you by John Doe, the straw man. Fictitious entity and the court will have to get in line after you as they will never collect without you getting paid first. First in time, first in line. So in other words, if I have a lien against the straw man for $100 billion, unless the court has a lien for more than that, they're not going to collect anything because I was in there first and he hasn't paid me yet. So I'm still waiting to get paid. When the UCC-1 is filed, you file in a property list that includes everything and the kitchen sink. Real property, cars, boats, computer files, your hair follicles, DNA, blood, spit, medically collected samples, all paperwork in existence with your name on it. Get creative. Go for it. It's fun to think outside the box. This list will be loaded up as an addendum in a PDF file and will be evidence of the debt owed to you. Once you finalize your filings on the UCC-1, you will have the whole thing recorded at the county recorder's office. Mostly, they know what is going on and will not allow the farm animals that are you to escape from the slave ship. So you may have to record it online at nationalrepublicregistry.com in Texas. These folks, among others like getnotice.info, will post your files for all to see that is in the public record. Then you can send copies off to your Secretary of State, local police department, sheriff's office, highway patrol, etc., and have a powerful tool in place to justify suing the pants off any agent of the corporation who violates your pre-approved contract free fee schedule which is going to be something to the order of, I am going to sue you for a million dollars if you act unlawfully and use color of law statutes and whatnot to prosecute me. And since I gave you my contract and you didn't rebut it in 30 days, you agreed to the contract because you have to rebut it, otherwise you agree. So you don't have anything to complain about later when one of the agents of the state pulls me over and charges me with some crime where there isn't a victim and there isn't any breach of contract. Oh, I forgot to mention the fee schedule for violation of my rights is about $1 million per violation. You would send them notice of change of status and give them 30 days to rebut your UCC and have affidavit of status and then if they fail to rebut your paperwork you send them a notice of default and notice of estoppel, which would be a, a legal paper that bars them from injuring you in any way in the future or pay, or pay your fees for injuring you. This will never actually get paid, but you can generate some rather huge liens against people, which makes buying cars and getting credit very unlikely for them. I don't want to hurt anyone, but I wish to change the arrogance many public officials exude while being public servants these days. Tim Turner has what I consider the best program for doing these filings and you can find his information at moneyonaccount.com and it would be a must to, do, to go to one of his seminars after listening to the lectures in order to be able to better understand his teachings. Winston Shroud has some excellent information available at www.reddit.com backslash r backslash common law backslash comments, etc. So now you are in control, 
somewhat of your straw man. And now it's time to go after the birth certificate bond. You need to send Tim Geithner a copy of your birth certificate with the approved for value information written on it, thereby claiming it for yourself. It's a bond, it's worth a lot of money, and at this point the government's using it, and, but you wish to stop that, and you wish to be able to use it for yourself because it was created for you, and it's your energy that created it. You have just abandoned it in a dusty vault in Washington, D.C., but now you'd like to reclaim it. You would, you would have to get two or three copies of your birth certificate from your county recorder's office where you were born at about $15 each or whatever they're charging. You need the certified copies, not just photocopies, or they are worthless. Follow Tim's instructions, and once you claim your birth certificate, the government will no longer be able to freely use your credit, but will have to get your permission to access your account. The figure that most people use for the value of the birth certificate bond is upwards of $1 million at birth, but over the years it could go much higher. Once you post your bonds with Washington, D.C., you can write bonded promissory notes. I don't know much about that process as I have only done the first stage of filing the UCC-1 and establishing my control of my straw man. Next we will delve into approved for value. Since anyone can do approved for value, the process is the same as using bonded promissory notes to pay for items except that you just use your signature. In this process we go back to the understanding that there is no money. And so your promise to pay has the same value as the Federal Reserve's promise to pay, which is zero, which, as you remember, we call a Federal Reserve note or a promissory note. That is a promise to pay, but when? The truth is you will never get paid because the paper has no value. And the Fed will never give you anything of value for it. It's their note, it's their promise to pay you, but they will never pay you. The store owner currently accepts them, however, which is good for us because otherwise it would look like the Weimar Republic in Germany in 1919, where a wheelbarrow full of marks might buy a loaf of bread. What happens when the store owner stops taking Federal Reserve notes? Then what? The store owner currently takes pieces of paper with your order to pay on them now, only we call them checks. I mean, isn't that a promise to pay? A check is an order to pay given to the bank, but it isn't payment, just like the Federal Reserve note isn't payment. We all carry debt instruments and don't know it. Can you pay a debt with an instrument that itself is evidence of a debt? Until the federal note is exchanged for something of value, it is evidence of not being paid, or in other words, a debt. Who owes the debt? They owe you, right? I mean, if you went to work, after a week, you gave something of substance. You gave valuable work, something substan substantial. And what did you get? You got a piece of paper with writing on it. And the only reason you exchanged your week's worth of work for that piece of paper with writing on it is you believe that that piece of paper with writing on it will eventually go out and buy the things you need. And it will, as long as everybody honors it. But what happens when they don't? That's the issue. And the point is, is that the person who owes you that debt is your employer. They're the ones that owe you something of value and have never given you anything of value other than that piece of paper. What is the difference between trying to pay the store owner with seashells instead of Federal Reserve notes? They both have no value. The store owner refuses the seashells because he fears no one else will value them. But that's the only difference. Since the passage of HJR 192, Anyone can set off a debt, but not pay a debt. Approved for value is the order to set off a debt. Since you can't pay a debt, the entity giving you the bill, which isn't a bill, actually, but a statement, has to give you the means to set off the debt, as you can't pay it with debt instruments. 
The means to pay is the coupon on the bottom of the statement.